Oh, also, I forgot to mention last time around. Heat Knuckle Champion Flame Stag. Yeah. So, this rules. This rules so hard. This is, like, one of my favorite things. We were talking about it already. But, so, it's it's Magna Centipede stage again, which has a whole bunch of different stuff attached to it. Before I go into those other things, all these mechanics are the same. The enemy placement is the same. Everything is the same. You can actually get the two power-ups that are here if you miss them the first time around, which is really cool, because it is literally just like, here's the same level, um, except it's also using the really awesome, heroic, exciting music from the intro stage. So it's like, all of the best stuff in one thing! It's like, this is so cool! And it, again, this kind of thing never happens again. Like, it's never such a plot-centric level that it appears three times in one game, counting cutscenes and stuff. So it's just like, god, that's so rad. Yee. Were you gonna say anything? What's the plot right now? <laughs> oh, hey, it's Sigma! It's Wolverine and his friend! Hey, Black Zero, how's it going? Everybody's favorite. So yeah, uh, wait, wh like, what do you mean, what's the plot? Like, like, what's the plot of this game? Why is Sigma here all of a sudden? Sigma's fucking always here, so... I don't think they cover that too heavily. It's kind of reasonable that you're able to just say, like, the X-Hunters were just higher-ups in, like, the original Rebellion. They were like, oh, fuck, okay, our master lost retreat. We'll kind of run things while he recovers. Also, since you find out other back. things later. Yeah, Zero's back. Also, math jokes, because, great. This is, uh, this is some of the thing that I was talking about earlier. You were destined to follow me. And then Zero with a nice woody one-liner. So basically what's happening here is because we recovered all of Zero's parts and protected him, Dr. Kane reassembles him and everything, he's back to normal, and it cuts out that boss fight, so like, Zero kills, uh, Kirby Zero. Zero. <laughs> Kirby I like that. Uh, and there, that's it, like, there's no oddities or anything, he's like, oh shit, I'm sorry that everything's like, uh, going wrong, I'm gonna go take care of other things, which... Fucking of course, because like this right here is just like we have to beat everybody, including like the really really scary one that's down there. I'm gonna go like kill an inanimate computer, and you go fight the final boss. It's like, shouldn't we like work together right now, you fucking dumbass? But nah, I really gotta check more chan, you know. Later. Oh. So yeah. Look at how many floors this facility has, by the way. Uh, it's a very tall it, it's facility. Several. Which is cool, it makes me think it's How like did you the get through the high Don't worry about it. It would so be cool if the whole ceiling was like an X shutter, or a boss shutter. Mm -hmm. What are you just going to say that? Uh, this background is also in a mini boss room in this, in Magnus Centipede's level. Yep, it's basically the same one that's behind uh, Radar Killer, if I'm remembering correctly. So... I think it's the uh, X Hunter. This is one of my favorite... Oh god, that's so close. I forgot how... Yes! Oh my god, I feel so good about that fight. Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck just happened? So I... Jesus, I almost wish I did that a little bit slower. Um, <laughs> that's like one of my absolute favorite Sigma refights and in, the in the franchise. the music is so good. The music is really awesome, and he uses uh, powered-up versions of the stuff that you used to beat him in the previous game. So he's basically using Electric Spark against you, except it can, like, home in, and he does the charge shot way faster. Plus, he's using enhanced versions. I know, it's just, I'm going too fast for myself. <laughs> and he uses enhanced versions of his own tactics, so, like... Um, if you're on the ground in the X1 Sigma fight, he'll, like, dash forward and do an uppercut swing with the saber. If he connects with that in that, it does a lot of damage. If he connects with it in this, you fucking bounce all over the room like he's just like, FUCK THIS! It's like, oh shit, you actually got stronger, this is really rad. And then he turns into the, the wireframe and you punch him a couple times. Normally weak to strike chain, didn't have to do that, good job me. I do, I think it would be neat if, like, you couldn't damage him at all. And then he just starts spazzing out and dies, and Zero comes and he's like, yeah, I just reformatted the computer. <laughs> Got it. That actually would have been really cool. It's like, oh my god, what's happening right now? But yeah, so it's not really alluded to yet, and I kind of like the canon that they build up for this, but this is the first time you see, like, what the fuck is that? Because there's no 
information on it at all in like the credit sequence coming up. There's no plot that says anything in text anywhere. It's just like, what what the fuck? Like what's going on? Well, it's like, well, war, friend. Yeah, and then in the next one you find out the, the virus angle of everything, which I'll kinda go into more than to just keep each video topical. But I think it's really cool that like they did X one and it worked really well. And they were like, alright. So rather than doing a procedural thing like we keep doing Let's, like, write something and, like, build up to it, which is really, really cool. Because originally Zero was going to stay dead, too. And Afune had to convince them, like, wouldn't it be a shame if, like, such a good character design went away? So they brought him back again. Uh, and I think from there they basically pieced together everything else. Because I think, originally, there's, like, no connection to Zero or Wily or anything. He's just a really powerful ally. And you're supposed to, like, work up to be as strong as him. It's not until this one that he gets any actual plot. That sounds about right, yes. Super cool. Uh, once again, destroyed. Wonder if that will keep this <laughs> I wonder if this will become a trend. But yeah, so that's X2. It is a good game. Really like X2. Oh, uh, there was one other thing that I can go over while this is happening. Like, X, Dr. Light didn't have a dream of Reploids and him and Sister together. He didn't know about Reploids. Well, just robots in general. Where was what I was talking about? Mind your labels, X. <laughs> I gosh, shut up. <laughs> uh, oh, well, here was that note. Zero died in X1, but Inafune just came in one day saying, Don't you think it'd be a shame to let Zero stay dead? So we brought him back to life. It was that simple. Not only did we bring Zero back to life for no other reason than because we could, we brought him back in pieces. I don't know what I was thinking, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Fantastic. Right? It's like, uh, we'll bring it back, and he's a Snap Together model kit. the fuck is the... I think it's on the next page. Yeah. So, this one doesn't have staff credits in it. Which is in, weird. Just, but... Yeah. Well, it's explained. Uh, it has the same um, enemy listing thing, mm -hmm. which I always really like. I wish they did it in all of them. I think it's really, really cool. I want to do that in our games. But, um, so, I'm just basically just reading out of the book at this point, but it's the credits. What else do you want? Um, we had initially planned to take public submissions for boss characters in X2, but when we got to the development stage, we discussed it and decided against it. With the original Mega Man, we wanted players to feel a certain familiarity with the characters, but it was intent or our intention that the X series would have a, or would have a world with a more hardcore feel to it. We didn't want the bosses this world or in this world to be cute products of kids' imaginations. We needed them to be solid characters uh, refined by professionals, which is why a lot of them are like more aggressive and sharp looking. At the time, Capcom didn't usually include the credits in their games, but since we had an X1 and X2, or uh, since we had an X1 and X2 slated to have or was slated, okay, I see, it's an actual typo. Uh, but since we had in X1, and X2 was slated to have boss character submissions, and part of the appeal uh, was that the people who sent in the characters that we used would have their names in the credits, X1 had credits as an exception. Since we no longer needed the credits in the game once we decided not to accept public submissions, X2 didn't have any credits. Sorry, that was such a rough read. I had to, like, parse all the typos <laughs> in it. But yeah, so that's why this one doesn't have that. And I actually think it's kind of cool. And, you know, I guess if the staff didn't think it was necessary to be credited, then they're probably all in the first one, and they were like, you know what, we're, we're good. That's also kind of like the way the industry was for a long time. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't need to be credited. What the fuck are you talking about? It's a game. It's not real. Like, the first credit was an Easter egg that had to be hidden in the game by a program. I was like, well, I want my name in here somewhere. I did this! And as usual, the uh, the robot points, I think is what we call them in another one, or Reploid points or something, are just nonsensical after a certain point. And that's still awesome. This is the last one where they do end you as Mega Man X. And that makes me so sad. Like, I really love that. But anyway, that's X2. This would be Black Zero if you didn't save him. There you go. I huh? don't like how you said Black. Shut up. Cardboard Zero, whatever. Any final thoughts? It was pretty good. Cool. I'm glad you liked it. It's up there with one, and then it kind of starts to fall off. Well, X3 will be an experiment. Sort of. Next time. <laughs>